Welcome to lesson five titled Quick Fixes. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to do these things. We're gonna remove red eye from a picture. We're gonna brighten an image. We're gonna adjust the features of a face. We're gonna combine images to create a pan pan panorama. Crop and straighten an image and fill in the resulting empty areas. Blur the background of an image using iris blur. Merge two images to extend depth of field. Apply optical lens correction to a distorted image. Remove an object and seamlessly fill the empty space. And adjust the perspective of an image to match another image. The image that we're starting with is this lovely picture right here. I'm sure none of you, when you've taken pictures on your phone, have had this red eye deal. We're going to show you how to fix that. So. If you haven't already, go ahead and open this picture. It is redeyestart.jpg. And to show you what our finished product is going to look like, it's this. We're going to go from this to this, this to this, this to this. You can see in this picture, the picture is lightened up. And watch her face. We're going to do something to her face. Whoop. <coughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Anyway, that's where we're starting. So let's do this. After you've opened it, let's click File. And then Save As and title it Red Eye. Now, Red Eye. Underscore. working now let's do this just red eye and then your name and we're going to save it as a photoshop file so change this to, from jpeg to photoshop so red eye your name put it in your lesson five folder photoshop file save you can see now it's red eye parazine.psd so it is a full a full photoshop file so select the zoom tool and then drag to see the woman's eyes. Ooh, scary. So select the red eye tool under the spot healing brush tool. If you'll remember the spot healing brush tool, it's this one right here. And there is a red eye tool. So click on that. In the options bar, Reduce the pupil size to 23%. The number of the greatest basketball player to ever live, Michael Jordan. Some of y'all just got mad because you think it's LeBron. Well, y'all, it's okay that you're wrong. Nobody's going to judge you for that. Change the darken amount to 62%. And some of y'all don't have any idea who Michael Jordan and LeBron James is, but that's okay. The darken amount specifies how dark the pupil should be. Click the pupil in the woman's left eye. Look at there. The red reflection disappears. Click the pupil in her right eye to remove that reflection as well. Pretty hard to do, huh? If the red reflection is directly over the pupil, clicking the pupil usually removes it. If it doesn't, you can try clicking the highlight or dragging the red eye tool around the entire pupil. Choose view and then fit on screen. Looks much better already. Next thing we're going to do is work on brightening this image. The woman's eyes no longer glow red, but the overall image is a bit dark. You can brighten an image in several different ways as we've already seen. You can try adding adjustment layers for brightness, contrast levels, and curves depending on the degree of adjustment you want to make. For quick fix or a good starting point, try the auto button or the presets which are available in both the levels and curves adjustments. Let's try a curves adjustments layer for this. So click the adjustment panel and we're going to click curves. Click auto right here. 
In this example, the automatic correction adds a midpoint on the curve and raises its value, lightening the image mostly around the midtones. So it's talking about right here. Choose lighter RGB from the preset menu. So right here. Lighter RGB. It's that one. The curve changes slightly. The difference is that a preset applies to the, the same curve to every image while auto analyzes a layer and creates a curve customized for it. Click the reset to adjustment defaults button. That's this one right here. And that reverts to the unadjusted image. Select the on image adjustment tool on image adjustment tool which is that tool right there then click the center of the forehead and drag up when you do that clicking with that tool adds a curve point that corresponds to the tonal level you clicked in the image when you drag up you raise that point in the curve brightening the image from that tonal level so we're going to click there you can see that it's brightening things up if you want to use the auto button or the white point or black point samples, which are these icons over here, use them before applying a manual adjustments. Like presets, adjustments by those tools replace manual adjustments. So let's now click layer and then flatten image. Let me un uh let me undo that. If you want to see how much you've adjusted the image, if you hide this curves button here, you can see how much you've brightened it up. So now click layer and flatten image. So here's a little trivia question for you. Which tool is the red eye tool grouped behind? Do you remember? It is the spot healing brush tool. You might see that again. Just saying. We are now going to adjust facial features with Liquify. We are all doing this together for the first time. I can honestly say I've never used this, but we're going to try it. The Liquify filter is useful when you want to distort only part of an image. It includes face aware liquify options that can automatically recognize faces and images and then lets you easily adjust facial features such as the size of or distance between the eyes. This can be useful for photos used in advertising and fashion when portraying a certain look or expression may be more important than faithfully represent a specific person. You realize that a lot of magazine images, probably 99% of them, have been altered in some way or form. I know that would blow your mind. Filter and then liquefy. And when you do that, you will have the properties panel. If the face aware liquefy options are collapsed or hidden, click the right facing triangle to expand them. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but there's some thunder going on here. So you can click all of these air and it will show you different things that you can do. Make sure the eyes section is expanded and that the link icon is selected for both eye size and eye height. Let's talk about this right here. So for the eye size, let's change this to 32. Make sure that's selected. Mine wasn't selected. And then for the height, we're going to enter 10. Here's a little tip. When the face tool is selected in the liquefied toolbar, handles appear as you hover the pointer over different parts of the face. You can drag those handles to adjust different parts of the face directly as an alternative to dragging the face aware liquefy sliders. 
So instead of doing that, you can, you see how it's highlighting on things. Yeah, I'll do what I just did. All right. When the link icon is not selected for an eyes option, you can set different values for the left and right eyes. Make sure the mouth section is expanded and enter five for a smile. Five. And nine for height. And you can play around with this if you want to. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to do anything now, but after we're done here, you can you can play around with it just to see what you can do. Make sure the face shape section is expanded, and then enter 40 for the jawline, and 50 for the width, You can deselect and reselect the preview option to compare the image before and after. So right here, before, as before, there's after, before, after, before, after. The face aware liquify options have a limited range because they're designed for subtle, believable distortions. If you want to exaggerate faces into a character, or extreme expressions, you may want to use more advanced manual tools along the left side of the liquefied dialog box, or try face altering filters and neural filters, which we'll explore in lesson 15. Feel free to experiment with any of the face aware liquefied options to get a better sense of the possibilities for quick, easy alterations. Quick click OK to exit liquefy. Close the document and save your changes. So just click File and then save and then close your document.